The Queen of Granada by M. Riff Chapter 40, Gear Change The bus driver lit another cigarette. Even though he'd seen the Land Rover and VW bus in the side mirror for a while, he remained quite composed. As the Land Rover passed his window, he exchanged a look with the driver, who was sitting on the wrong side of the car. It was clear that a group of Roma had put a German and an English car together and was now on their way on Spanish roads. He followed them with his eyes as both cars confidently overtook the long line of vehicles ahead of the bus. Tessa glanced at Rita and asked, Why did you read your stepmother's psychology books then? Rita replied, You haven't yet told me why you decided to study psychology. Tessa looked at her and said, Okay, but remember, it's your turn next. She placed her psychology book back in her bag and continued, My mother always had high alcohol consumption. When she was busy at the restaurant, she'd limit herself to the occasional glass of white wine here and there. But after we closed the restaurant and moved back to the Netherlands, she started drinking excessively. It was her way of coping with our family's complicated situation. She used alcohol to deal with her depression. Her depression and alcohol abuse were the reasons my parents had originally moved to sunny southern Spain. Now, we were back in the Netherlands, dealing with constant rain and long, dark evenings. On top of that, my father needed care. He used to support my mom, but now the roles had been reversed. We lived in Groningen, in a small house by a canal, which seemed idyllic, but life was grey under these circumstances. None of us, especially my mom, could see anything positive. I had a part-time job in a cafe. One icy November evening, I cycled home in the pouring rain. I could tell from a distance that there was no light in the windows. I immediately knew something was terribly wrong. Initially, I thought my father had fallen ill again, perhaps another blood clot. But when I entered the house, both my father and brother were sitting in the dark kitchen in silence. I rushed into my mother's bedroom and found her lifeless but peaceful, surrounded by empty bottles of alcohol and her medication. She had taken them all at once. Later, my brother told me he was the first to find her. He was about to call for an ambulance, but my father stopped him by pressing his hand on the receiver and asking him to let her rest in peace. In the following days after my mom's suicide, I was the one who cried the most.